What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Coral Reef Talk. Today, I'm joined with Scott from Mile High Reefers. Hey Scott, how's it going? It's going great. Thank you for letting me on the show. This is awesome. You do a lot of very helpful uh, videos. Your channel's full of wonderful information uh, for people that's been in the hobby for a long time and people that are new to the hobby. How did you get started in the hobby? So I got started almost 11 years ago and I had a 29 gallon tank that I set up. It's actually the frag tank that you see in my videos now if you watch those. And to be honest, I started off as an epic failure. Um, the first few months, the tank did really well. And after that, the tank couldn't keep any coral alive. So that tank for six years was Live Rock, my Clownfish, Nemo that's still in my tank, and that's all I could keep alive. So I started watching YouTube videos. I started watching like New York Stilo and um, Ricketts Reef and all of those guys, the LA Fish guys. And I really started getting the confidence that I could start doing this stuff. So I bought a 90 gallon tank, um, did an upgrade. Everything was on a budget, but with that 90 gallon tank, came a salinity gauge. And when I tested the salinity on my 29 gallon tank, it was at um, 1.031 instead of 026, right? Like we normally want it. So the, the whole time, my failure on the 29 gallon tank was completely due to a bad salinity gauge. So the one I've been using was bad and um, so that kind of drove me to want to make videos, right? So I'd gotten tons of help from other YouTubers. So I decided I really wanted to try. And if you look at my early videos, a lot of it's just me documenting the tank. They're not very good. I don't know what I'm doing. And to be honest, I'm still learning. So that's been the whole evolution. I got help from people and I decided I really want to try to help others. That's really cool. And you've, you've been in the hobby for over 11 years. And is there one piece of advice that you wish you would have known about at the very beginning to help you be more successful besides the salinity? Yeah, so besides the salinity, um, one thing I've learned is you gotta be patient. Um, early on, like if a coral wasn't responding, I would try to like move everything around in my tank. And it's just, it's not a good idea, right? Don't move everything in your tank to try to move, fix one coral. You'll end up just making everything mad. So that's one thing that I really wish I would have learned early on was don't adjust the whole tank to try to make one coral happy. And you know, the patience that goes along with watching it and learning and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I remember I had a protein skimmer, one of my very first ones and the pump kept on for some reason, disconnecting for the protein skimmer. So I would run around frantic trying to fix it and just making changes very quickly or even moving corals around is probably not the best idea. No, that's some of the best advice you can give. Take it slow. And so what about this hobby do you really like the most? Do you like that challenge of keeping the and maintaining equipment or uh, do you just like the joy of the result? You know, for me, it's a mix of art and science that I love, right? So as a kid, I loved science. I mean, I didn't follow that as a career path or anything, but I love the biology and the science that goes along with this. But with it, there's a nice art portion of it, right? Because you can have every part of, every parameter nailed perfectly and still have an ugly tank. Um, and then, to the opposite of that, you can have the best aquascape and everything, and if you get the parameters wrong, you're still gonna have an ugly tank. So I love the mix of art and science. So trying to make a beautiful tank that works with the biology is a real challenge, and I really enjoy that. It's cool how you can be a chemist, you can be a plumber, um, just a mix of different things in this hobby. Yeah, it's a lot of different trades that go into be, being a good aquarist. Now, is there one coral or is there something that you 
have never had in your tank before that you wish you have or that you absolutely have to get in the future? You know, there's actually two I really want to try, and that's Pectinia and Leptosiris. And I might even said the last one wrong, but I really <laughs> like the looks of those two. I just haven't had one yet, and I just want to find one and try them out. For many of us in the hobby, or for many beginners in the hobby, uh, they can feel overwhelmed or challenged, or they, they don't know what to do with their tank. What piece of advice can you give to someone who's having a difficult time with their reef tank? If you haven't started yet, the more research you can do, the better. But at some point, you just got to pull the trigger and do it. And you know what? If you're, if you're in it and you're struggling, you know, try to find help. That's the biggest thing you can do. Look for somebody at your LFS. Look for, you know, online forums, somebody to help you out. Because this hobby can be completely overwhelming early on. And I mean, really, I love YouTube because there is so much good stuff on there. You can Google it, you can pretty well find anything you want to know. You can see pictures, you can see videos, examples. Um, yeah. Everything's out there. And you know what? As much as a lot of the people on YouTube claim to be experts, I don't think any of them are. Right, it's, it's all trial and error. We're all experiencing the same thing or someone out there has been through what the new hobbyist is going through. Oh, absolutely, and that's that's what I love about YouTube. Is I love um, I love watching the people who've been doing it for a while, who happily show the mistakes they make and how they correct them and what they do. I really appreciate about that about the YouTube community that there's so many people out there that will absolutely show you, hey, I made this mistake and this is how I fixed it. It's fantastic. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Scott, for joining me today. Thank you for having me, this has been great. And if you guys don't know anything about Scott or Mile High Reefers, head over to his channel right now, click that subscribe button and enjoy all of his content. He's got some great advice and some helpful content for you to enjoy. Be sure to hang out for the rest of this video. The Coral of the Week is coming up next. And as always, leave a like, comment down below, and we'll see you next time on the Coral Reef Talk.